Hi everyone, I wanted to show you what I did with this china doll that I was given. Um, a couple of friends of ours gave us this doll that they'd found in their house and said do I want it so I could turn it into a spooky doll. Um, so I said yes please. So that's what it originally looked like. And you can see the original dress and everything there. And what I decided to do with this one is I wanted to create like a cracked china doll effect. Um, and make her look as spooky as possible. I love the skin tone of this doll. Um, straight away I was like, yes, this needs to be a spooky doll and the skin tone is ideal. Um, so I decided to turn her into a Halloween decoration. So first of all, I tried removing the paint with um, just a little nail file and just see if it would rub off. Because sometimes on China dolls, I've found some dolls I can use the nail varnish remover. Some of them I have to sand it off. It depends whether it's varnished or not. This one doesn't particularly feel like it's varnished or anything like the, the you can feel the texture of the porcelain, um, almost as if the surface is unfinished. Um, so I cracked open the um, nail varnish remover and decided to use that. And it worked really, really well. Because I know when I, I had another China doll, I couldn't get the paint off and I had to sand it off in the end. So I was quite pleased I could just use the um, now I'll remove and get the paint off that way. Um, this just makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to prepare the doll for painting. But I really like the colour of the um, porcelain that this is made out of. Um, it means I don't have to do a lot of work on the skin tone or anything because it's already a skin tone that I think looks really good for spooky dolls. The most awkward part was removing this the um, paint off the lips but I found if you put a bit of extra nail varnish remover on your cloth and then just hold it against the lips when it's folded you can get into the little crevices and remove all the paint quite easily and then the next thing I did was actually smash the head and the reason I wanted to do this because obviously it's the easiest way of creating the crack doll effect because um, it is a crack doll now um, so what I did was I wrapped the head in a towel and I hit it twice with a hammer. I hit it once and saw where it broke and then hit it again in in, in, a, in the front of the face where I wanted it to break. And it worked quite well. And then I got this gel super glue, um, which I used. And normally I hate using super glue because it gets everywhere and I can't stand the feeling of super glue on my fingers. Like... You get that like really stiff, crispy layer on your skin and I, I can't stand it. So I don't normally use super glue. But obviously for this I had to use super glue because there's no way hot glue was going to hold this together. You need something more, a bit tougher. So I tried this gel super glue um, and while it's a good glue, it's fine. I still had the same problem where because I have to hold it with my hands and hold it together. And I always put on too much super glue. I don't know why. Um... I ended up with super glue all, <laughs> believe it or not, all over eight of my ten fingers, um, <laughs> which is why I hate working with super glue. And that was a nightmare. I didn't actually glue my fingers together or glue my fingers to the doll, which was good. But I just had this layer of crispy super glue on all, all, all like eight fingertips. I'm, I just missed the two thumbs. Um... So what I had to do was soak my hands in warm soapy water and then it took me an hour to peel the paint up, the peel the glue off. Um so yeah, I hate super glue. <laughs> I don't think I'll use super glue for anything else unless I really, really have to. I'll have to remember to put gloves on because I always make a mess. Well anyway, once I glued the head back together and I left it to dry for a good couple of hours just to make sure it was secure. Because I know at one point I'd glued it together. And I moved it and popped the head apart again. Um, it's like when you get one of those ball jigsaws and then you touch it and it collapses and you, you want to swear and scream. Um, <laughs> so after leaving it to dry for a couple of hours, I used this technique to colour the doll. So what I did was take some black paint and you just paint all over the doll, like all, all over a certain area of the doll. And then you wipe it off with a cloth and... The paint will cling to the, the material of the doll, especially because this one's like a china doll, so it's quite absorbent, um, and wipe off other areas. So it just makes all the nooks and crannies, the cracks, the crevices, and the any textures of the doll show up really, really well. 
And also it makes it look like it's been an old, abandoned, battered doll that's been stuck in an attic or, I don't know, in a cellar for years. Um, I like to think maybe the story of this doll is it was locked in a cellar for years after the family got creeped out by spooky goings on with it or something. Um, so obviously I wanted it to look creepy and dirty and spooky. And obviously, like I said, because the skin tone of it was already ideal, I haven't actually had to do anything to the skin tone. It is literally just this little wash of black paint and then using a very tiny brush to just go into where the cracks are with the with the black paint just to make the cracks show up a bit more um, and just filling in any gaps because on the inside there was a gap there on the side and I wanted to make sure that the bright white of the broken porcelain wasn't showing through and it's a really easy effect um, that anyone can use to make a doll like this look really spooky quite quickly um, as you can see I mean it's took me what minutes and I think it looks a lot better and it looks a lot spookier um, you'll see later on as well what I do is I will wipe over it again a little bit with a tissue um, and this just wipes off the excess paint from the surface of the doll from where I've painted the cracks because obviously when you paint into the cracks of the doll um, you'll get little bits of paint on the main surface of the doll and obviously we don't really want those because obviously it looks obvious that it's all been painted um, so I do wipe over the doll a second time just to get rid of some of that excess paint and another useful technique as well is around the eyes there was a bit too much paint and it looked a bit weird it was like a bit too like it pooled funny oddly in a couple of areas so what you do is you take a wet paintbrush um, that's clean and just wipe over the area that you want to remove some of the paint and that sort of it adds the water back into the paint to make it liquid again and then you can use a tissue to just dab and that removes um, some of the excess paint just to thin it out a bit so like as you can see here I'm using that on my finger just to get rid of some of the excess paint that's around the eye because it was looking a bit weird and I wanted the eyes to show up a bit brighter and also around the edges of the mouth, it came out really dark and looked weird. So I used that technique to just remove some of the paint. And because the acrylic has been freshly applied to the surface of the china doll, if I put water on, I can lift quite a lot of paint off. So at least that's one advantage with this technique. And then it dried quite quickly because i got a fan on and also the room's quite warm. So now it's... the the next thing I did was uh, reattach the head back onto the body. And the because the, the um, ceramic was quite absorbent, because like I said, it doesn't feel like it's got a finished surface to it. Um, it. It literally, within a minute, it was like dry. So it was nice and easy and quick. You'll see with the hands and, hands and legs, I don't actually show you in the video, but what I did was I just painted the cracks on. And basically you just draw a wiggly line in black and then just smudge it a bit with your finger um, and that creates a crack effect. I didn't want to break the arms and legs. I mean the one leg's broke anyway, but I didn't want to break the other arm the other arms and the other leg. Um, just because I didn't want to fiddle about with the super glue again because I was really annoyed with using the super glue. Um, so by painting it on, it just saved me having to use the glue again. And what I'm doing here is I'm using some thick cotton. And this is like some strong cotton that I use when I use my sewing machine. And <clears throat> go through a few times. And each time you thread it through the body of the doll and the hole of the neck, tie it off so it's like it's knotted multiple times um, just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I'm using the holes that were originally on the neck of the doll to attach it to the body. On the back, one of them's broke off and I never had the piece. It was missing when I got the doll. Um, but if you're not sure, you can always put a little bit of glue between the um, neck area of the doll and the body just to make sure it's a bit more secure. But I found with three holes that I used and sewing it quite a few times, I found it was nice and secure. Then the next job was to do the hair. Um, I didn't want the doll to have blonde hair and the wig on this is atrocious. So I used my scissors just to remove the hair as much as I could. Because um, then once the hair is nice and short, it's easier to pull the plugs out with some pliers from underneath the skull cap. 
And the reason I did this is I want to reuse the skull cap because then to attach all of the hair to the doll, I've only got to use one blob of glue, like one blob of hot glue about the size of a five pence piece. Like it's half the size of a quarter if you're American. Um, and that makes it easy to take off if I change my mind and want to redo the hair. Um, I did start off by using a needle and some wool and actually going through each hole in the skull cap to re not you know do a proper reroute on it. Um, but I got bored of that really quickly. So in the end, I just glued the wool to the rubber cap with um, hot glue. And as you can see here, now I've cut all the hair short. I'm just using some pliers just to pull out those plugs and remove the latex based glue that was originally used on the china doll luckily it, co it comes off the skull cap a lot easier than it comes off the doll i found to get that off the doll i had to sand it and all sorts it was a nightmare and i even tried heating it up with a heat gun and i had a right game removing it off the doll um but off this thankfully it came off a lot easier and obviously because i've cut the hair short the plugs what's left of them pulls out really easy um, so I can use the skull tack cap for the next bit. And I didn't film me rerouting because it took me over an hour and it was very boring. Um, but this is what the doll looked like once I completed the reroute. So that's what she looks like so far. And I've divided all the bits of wool, like separated the different strands of wool out. So it gives you that lovely curly effect to the hair. And then I put the dress through the washing machine with some black dye. Now, obviously, I'm not sure what the fabric was, so I just put in some standard dye that I'd got. Um, and as you can see, it didn't quite take as I was planning, but you know what? I don't hate it. The lace went this, like, orangey colour, and then the dress has gone, like, a grey colour. Um, so, yeah, I don't hate it. And obviously, if I wanted the dress to be black, I'm assuming I'd just dye it again or find a dye that's more suited to this fabric um but either way i'm quite pleased with it so that's it that's my spooky doll hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now